What's going on, folks? It is K Spade the Prospect. I am back today with a brand new episode of Fix the Knicks, my NBA 2K16 My GM series. We was doing great, y'all. We was fixing the Knicks. Hell, to be completely honest with y'all, I really thought that I had fixed the Knicks. Like, I thought I had built the perfect roster over there. I don't know what happened, though. This season right here has been a struggle for us. It's really been a disappointment. It's been a failure. So what I decided to do was to go ahead and sim to the end of the season. I wanted to see if I was the issue, like maybe I just wasn't playing well. And you know, what I discovered was kind of crazy. So I want to bring it to you guys right here. This video is kind of long, so what I decided to do was just chop it in two pieces. But don't worry, I'm going to give you both parts, part one and two in the same day. So you don't have to worry about saying, well I saw part one, when will part two be uploaded? I'm just going to drop them both, right? Anyway, let's get into it, man. I started the sim. The team started to lose a lot. I mean, not just like a game here, a game there. They was losing a lot. Then the injury bug started to come and bite several players on the team. You know, different guys was getting hurt. I'll show you guys how the season ended. First of all, shout out to Melo. Melo stepped up for the bench and said, hold up. We got some injuries, but I don't want you to make any moves. We got, you know, the bench over here to, to step up. I, I don't know what Melo saw in the bench that made him feel like those guys could step up because I don't see it. But you can see what I'm saying about the team. They was not just losing, y'all. They was getting drugged six in a row, seven in a row, eight in a row. Finally, they did beat the Pels. I mean, this is just crazy. Of course, we got another injury, too. So the crazy thing about these losses, and you guys can see it. You're watching it like I'm simming it. You're watching it in real time. These ain't like one-point losses or two-point losses in most cases. The wins are real close wins, but the losses look ugly. Like my team is out here getting that work. So I just completely let go of all the control. I stopped playing the games. I stopped managing the, you know, like the game plan. I, I left all that in the hands of Derek Fisher, who I'm pissed off with. So of course I get a press conference where they put you on the hot seat and say, you know, which part of your staff are you not happy with? And I just threw them coaches under the bench. They got a job like I got a job. You know, it's my job to kind of assemble the team. It's their job to go out there and get the most out of the players, and they ain't doing it. We got to make changes this offseason. The season ends with us still losing games, as you can see. I don't know, y'all. It's so crazy because you look at us on paper, we look good. Show you guys. Of course, I did complete some, some uh, goals for the owner, Philip Turner. Let's get all that mess out the way. Let's talk about season awards. No shock here. Steph Curry was... NBA Most Valuable Player. Ben Simmons was Rookie of the Year with the Utah Jazz. That's crazy. Derrick Rose, Sixth Man of the Year. He's not even starting anymore. Anthony Davis, Defensive Player of the Year. Stanley Johnson, Most Improved Player of the Year. And Greg Popovich was Head Coach. I don't know who that executive guy was, but I'm trying to get GM of the Year award myself, and we went the wrong way. My first year here, we built up. We looked great. We went to the playoffs. This year, we are a lottery team. How do you go from the playoffs to a lottery team? I'm about to get fired. I mean, if I was Phil Turner, I would fire me. Everybody would have to go. Another thing that's disappointing, when you look at the um, regular season awards, no Knicks in the first team, all NBA. Second team, third team, really no New York Knicks representation anywhere in the, in the award ceremony. I got a problem with that. Now, I told you guys early on, during the All-Star weekend, DeMar DeRozan got snubbed for everything. And his points per game, he should have been at least a reserve in the All-Star game. Same thing with Melo. Melo would kill it. He'll be top five in scoring and won't even start. Like, we got to do something to get the fan support up over here in New York. Sam, the whole uh, postseason, to my surprise, Golden State was put out of the playoffs by the Spurs. The Spurs then went on to put out LeBron James and his Boston Celtics to win the championship. Pop said he was the coach of the year, and, and damn it, he took it all the way. It was some big player retirements, too. Kobe, who had already been shipped out of L.A., you know, Kobe's gone. You kind of want to see Kobe gone when he started rocking another uniform. I ain't ready for that. But a few big names, and the big names would go right from being in the NBA to, you know, first ballot Hall of Famers, which is kind of dope. I think that's pretty dope. So Kobe, Tim, Duncan, and Dirk, all those guys go straight out of the league Hall of Fame inductees. Let's get it. Now, here we go, man. Like I said, we're a lottery team this year. If you're going to stink, you kind of want to stink enough to get in the lottery and hopefully get a really good pick. Now, I'll take a top 10 pick. I'll take any of these lottery picks, of course, 
especially considering we didn't really have draft picks my first year here. But I want a top five pick. If this thing is like I expect it to be, you're going to have a big discrepancy between like the top three people and everybody else. So, you know, if I can get in that top five, I like to. Let me see what we got going on here. Check this out. We got Lakers with the number 11 pick. Bulls at 12, Bucks at 13, Pacers at 14. Now, Toronto comes in with the 10th pick. You know, they kind of show you the odds. Who's supposed to get that pick and then who actually gets it. So, the odds was for the Knicks to be the 8th pick. Of course, with everything else that's gone wrong, you know, we would be worse than the regular odds. So, we get the ninth pick. We can go ahead and speed it up now. We got the ninth pick going into the draft. My mindset is to look for a center. I like what we got from the 1 to the 4. I know a lot of y'all not a big fan of Pat Bell, but I like what he gives us. With DeRozan at the two, Melo at the three, and Chris Stapps at the four. I like that. Worst case scenario, we could move Chris Stapps to the five. Worst case scenario. But going into the draft, my mindset is, let's get a center. So anyway, we speed through the rest of the, the lottery picks so you can see how this whole thing is going. The Rockets got the third pick. Now watch they come out of this draft cold. Watch they going to get like somebody cold as hell to compliment what they already got out there and they going to be dope. Nuggets got the number one pick, Phoenix at two. Forget all that. Let's get to the draft. Some other things we got to take care of. I already told you guys we wanted to get rid of the coaching staff. Now, I don't really want to fire Ray Allen because I'm a Ray Allen fan. We're going to make a way for Ray to stay around here. We, Ray, I got you, bro. Derek need to get his shit, though. Derek is out of here. So, to my surprise, the owner, Philip Turner, feels the same way I do. He wants Fisher out of here. He wants us to go after a coach with the legend badge. Hey, you know, all I can do is agree. We need a new coach. I would love to get somebody in here who can jump right in and make this team instantly better. We also got to get another CFO. He wants a guy more economical. We trying to make money, man. We got to get this. Not only do we want to make money, but maybe if we make the team more marketable, which is crazy because we're in a large market here in New York, but maybe the fans will get more involved and we can get voted into this mess you know like the all-star game and do better and you know like season awards anyway let's get into it the assistant gm comes in and lets me know that he don't think i can get a better trainer than the trainer we got on staff and that's cool i'm good with that the trainer didn't do bad i don't think we did have some injury issues especially late down the stretch but i was just simming so i don't know you know how it is nine times out of ten in video game world if you sim it goes way worse and if you play it on your own. So here we go. Kyle Rose is the CFO that I'm here to interview. He's like that dude. When I went and looked at all the candidates, he was the guy with the best resume. We get a man, we talk to him, but you know me, I'm still a hustler, right? So when we get down to the point where we're talking about money, of course he wants a four-year deal. I'm good with that, though, because I don't want to be right back here at this table in the next two or three years. But this guy wants 1.21 mil per season. Me... I'm going to offer him just a tad less at 940. Now, that's not enough to disrespect him. He wasn't pissed off. He left here feeling pretty good about it. The next person we get in for an interview is Greg Popovich. He just won the championship. He just won coach of the year. He's got the legend badge. He's the coach. He is it, right? We come in and talk to Pop. Of course, Pop's going to want a four-year deal as well. Perfect. If it was up to me, we would lock Pop in for like six or eight. Then again, Pop mad old. I don't even know if he want to coach that long but we offer him exactly verbatim what he says he wants now to be fair i should also say at one point it said popovich had nine offers everybody wanted greg popovich i should have went in strong i should have offered him the eight but i offered him what he said he wanted he said he wanted 6.76 that's what we offered he left there to think about it the cfo kyle rose and our coach candidate Popovich both shot us down. They both shot us down. You see, I went on to talk to another CFO, like on some, you know, I'm just going to see if I can have somebody else in there type stuff. So I got another CFO in the tuck. Ain't really worried about that. Head coaching, though, after Pop shot us down, which took a couple of weeks, it was only one other coach with the legend badge. That was William Goodrich. I felt like it was super important for us to get this guy because you're trying to keep the owner happy as well, too. So pretty much whatever he asked for, he's going to get. Even though we did the same thing with Pop. Pop had way more offers on the table than this guy. We offered him what he wanted. He ended up, uh, you know, taking the deal. Now we got to get us a CFO. Robert Mills, this guy, also had that economical trait, you know what I'm saying, to help us make the bread. 
he wants a small contract. Your boy was feeling so ballsy. He asked for less than a half meal. I went in there and slapped even more money on the table. I said, sign your name on the dotted line, bro. You're not leaving here. And of course, we kept the trainer, David Clark. So Philip Turner is happy. We got a coach with the legend badge. We got a CFO with the economical trader badge or whatever the hell you want to call it. We look good. We got our trainer back. Now we got to go to the draft combine, look and see how these kids look and decide where we want to go with our pick. Keep in mind, we traded our second round pick during the season to get Buddy Hill and Jamal Crawford. Hindsight, I know what y'all are going to say. You probably could. Right. But at the time, I really felt like it was a good move. So we made the move. We get out here, man. The head, the new head coach, William Goodrich, comes in the office. I don't know why. He jumped in and said, look, this is who I think we need to draft. And he wants us to draft the power forward. Now, I wanted to draft a center. At the same time, if the power forward looks good enough, I'm cool moving Chris Stapps to the five. Guy Cohen is the guy he wants me to take a look at. Right here, his draft rank is seven. Now, it's different sources. You see he's seven on Draft Express, 15 on the 2K Big Board. I think he was 10 on NBA.com or something like that. Now, when you look at his strengths, everybody kind of felt like he could develop into an all-star one day, really good potential. I like that. He averaged 16 points a game and damn near 10 boards. Almost averaged a double-double. So I like what I got from him. When I went and looked at centers, the best center on the board was Wade Welsh. I'm still trying to maul over which one I'm going to, you know, take. His strength is that he could develop into a good player. Like, if that's your strength, I'm already kind of like, whoa, hold up. Then I realized he only scored 10 a game. His rebounds were a little lower as well. So I decided we was going to go after Guy Cohen. When you know Guy Cohen, depending on which source you look at, his draft rank was higher than I will pick at 9. So we might have to make a move to get this guy. William Goodrich said, do whatever you got to do to get this guy. Whatever we got to do, we got to take him. We go to the draft. I'm going to speed this up too. 2K, one thing you guys got to do, stop making us watch this draft in real time. You should be able to skip just to the user draft. I mean, if you want to see it, why not? But if you, like me, and don't really care who the computer taking, because it's got no bearing on what you got going on, then let me get that all the way up out of here. But let's get into it. I was worried that we would not, this guy would not be around when it was time for us to draft. So I had to make a trade. After searching around, man, the Hawks was willing to make a deal with us that I like. We gave them the nine pick for the seven pick. And now, of course, we had to also give up our first round pick for next season. I know y'all going to hate that, but somewhere along the line, I'm going to try to get us another first round pick. And we took Carlos Boozer, who might end up getting cut anyway. We get into the draft. Number one was taken. Number two, Jackie Washburn. I'm looking at these dudes too, right? Because I'm like 76 overall. I'm trying to look at the overalls and get a general idea of what we taking. If the number two guy was a 76 overall, I'm like, man, could we possibly be taking a guy that's not even good enough to play? The number three guy is a 68. He's the third pick out of the draft. This man averaged 22 points a game. He's a 68. We in trouble. We in trouble. So we're up, man. Here's our draft. I go through and look. Lucas Strong, really good point guard. I don't feel like we need a point guard, though. I like what Pat Bev gives us. We go ahead and take Guy Cohen. This is the guy, right? So I guess what I'm going to do, let me stop part one right here. We'll pick up with part two right here. I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Peace.